we want to think about the distance that we've traveled along a curve. So imagine we've got some parametric curve here. It's given as our position, given by our position as a function of time. So we have r of t here. And this is where we're going to be at our starting time a. And then we'll have an ending time b. And this is our location. And what we want to do is to figure out at a certain time, how far have we traveled along the curve? So we want to measure the distance along the curve. So if we could write things in terms of the distance traveled instead of the time, that would be more, more natural to the curve. That should be independent of the parameterization we choose because distance along the curve is independent of how you parameterize the curve. So our plan is to get the distance s that we've, that we've traveled along the curve up until some time t. So we want s at our starting time to be 0 and s at our ending time to be the entire length of the curve. So, <clears throat> so there's our plan. We want to find a function that will give us the length, the distance traveled along the curve as a function of time. Now we're going to do that by adding up little bits of the curve. If you think about our parameterization, we start with a number in this interval between our starting time and our ending time. And then given the time there, then we are at different locations along the curve. So if we break this up, if we partition the interval from A to B into tiny little bits of time, which we'll call delta t, this is a little change in time, then that actually has the effect of partitioning our curve into tiny little lengths of curve, which we could call delta L, so a little, little bit of length along the curve. Now we want to figure out, as time changes from this amount, how far do we actually move along the curve? So let's say that this little change in time corresponds to maybe this little change along the curve. Well, we could use differentials to approximate how far we've gone. We will have, our x will have changed by about x prime of t times delta t. And the y value will have changed by about y prime of t, delta t. Of course, x and y and z, these are all coming from our parameterization r, right? Our parameterization r would look like some x is some function of time, the y coordinate is some function of time, and the z coordinate is some function of time. So just using the idea of a differential, if you take the rate of change times the, the amount of change in the input, you'll get the amount of change in the output. So if we've moved over this much in the x direction, this much in the y direction, and this much in the z direction, then we can find out how far we've gone, this delta L, basically by just, by just uh, finding the, the, that distance, right? So we'll just add up each of those changes, the distance we moved in the x, the distance we moved in the y, the distance we moved in the z. That's the usual distance formula, right? We just take those distances and square them, add them up, and take the square root. Now, replacing delta x with x prime delta t, and delta y with y prime delta t, and delta z with z prime delta t, each of the terms is going to have a delta t squared in it. So I will factor that out so I don't have to write it too many times. And then I'll have x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus z prime of t squared. Let's see, I need one more set of parentheses there. Okay, now the root of a product is the product of the roots, so we basically have that our little change in L is x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared times the square root of delta t squared, which would just be delta t. So that's a little bit of length of the curve, and what we want to do is to add up from the first little bit to the last little bit, the lengths traveled all along there. So we have x prime squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared times delta t. We recognize that as a Riemann sum. And when we take the limit as the norm of the partition tends to 0, in other words, as we make the maximum um, delta t, go to zero, that's going to force all of them to go to zero, so we're going to get a finer, finer and finer partitions here is the idea. Then we know we get an integral. The integral will be from a to b, and we'll just have x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared dt.
that's going to be the total length along the curve. So that will be the entire length of the curve. That's not quite what we want. What we want is the distance traveled up to a particular time. But you, you can see we can get that if we just, instead of integrating from the starting time all the way to the end, let's just sum up how much distance we've traveled from the starting time A until the current time, which could be some time between A and B. So we're just adding up just the first few right, bits here. So we're going to integrate from A to T in this thing. Now if I have T in the bound, I need to use a different variable to integrate with. So I'll just use, let's see, real closely the Greek letter for T, I guess, would be tau. So we'll, we'll call that uh, delta tau. Now see, this function actually depends on t, whereas the whole length, these would all be numbers, and we would, we would determine a single number that would be the length of the curve. This depends on the value of t. The bigger t is, the more of the curve you'll add up. So this is actually a function of t, this is the s of t, and we call this the arc length parameter. So when we see S, S stands for arc length, and S and it's a function of T because the longer it's been, the further you have moved along the curve. So there's our arc length parameter. So let's look at an example of how you could calculate, um, how you could find this arc length parameter. So let's start with this function. Um, we know that S of T is equal to the integral from our starting time. Um, there's no starting time given, so maybe we'll just choose 0 as our starting time, up to t of the square root. Let's see, the derivative of x prime of t is, the so the derivative of x is x prime of t. That's 3 cos t. So we'll take that derivative squared, plus the derivative of this would be minus 3 sine t. So we get minus 3 sine t squared, and then the derivative of this would be um, 4. So we'll get 4 squared d tau. Oops, this all needs to be in terms of this other variable tau, right, because I have this, the variable t is being used as the bound here. Now notice what this really is, is the integral from 0 to t of the speed. So this is the, the velocity, the, the uh, the norm of the velocity or the magnitude of the velocity d tau. And that makes sense because if you take a rate times time, right, you get a little distance and we're summing up all the little distances from time zero to time t. So this is that will be how far that we've traveled. So really the formula is just to integrate from zero to t the speed d tau. Okay, now in this particular case, the speed happens to be constant. So when we add these up, we have 9 cosine squared and 9 sine squared. That makes 9. 9 and 16 makes 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we're just adding up 5 d tau. So we find an antiderivative, which would be 5 tau. And we evaluate it between the two endpoints. If we plug in t here, we get 5 t. If we plug in 0, we get 5 times 0. And so we get 5 t. Ah, so on this curve, we're moving at a constant speed. The speed is 5 units per unit of time, right? 5 distance units per unit of time. And so if you, if you um, wait t time units, then you will have traveled a distance 5 times, times the number of time units. OK, so, so we have our arc length function, or arc length parameter, sorry, is s equals 5t. Now, there's something that you can do once you have the arc length parameter. The arc length parameter will always be an increasing function, right? Because the longer you go, the um, further you will have traveled. So you're summing up some positive number with respect um, to this variable. And so it's got to be an increasing function. So no matter what, this will be an increasing function. If it's an increasing function, it has to have an inverse. So you'll always be able to solve for um, t in terms of s. So in this case, we divide both sides by 5. Because you can do that, you can rewrite the parameterization. You can get a new parameterization in terms of the arc length. So we call that the arc length parameterization. So I can just go along here and replace the t with s over 5. 
So we get 3 cosine of s over 5. And 4 times s over 5 would be 4 fifths s. OK. Now, the beauty of this arc length parameterization is that we move at constant speed 1. So now, if we were to calculate the speed, when you rewrite it in terms of the arc length parameter, the speed is guaranteed to turn out to be 1. Because you're, you're seeing how, how far did you go, right, in terms of how far you've gone. So the speed has to be 1 because now every time s increases by 1, s is the distance traveled. So you must have traveled um, that same distance, and so the speed is 1. You move at 1 unit of length per unit in time. Hmm. So this, this we said was called the arc length parameterization. And that can be done for every curve, although sometimes s is a very complicated function of t, and so it's not a very pleasant experience to do that.